The Caligo Compact and Up a Baby Menu Strollers are two highly rated compact strollers. And I actually uh, recently did a review of the Caligo Compact Stroller where I briefly mentioned some similarities and differences with the Up a Baby Menu Compact Stroller, which uh, BT Dubs, you can check out by clicking the link in the description below. Uh, but I wanted to follow up that video with a more in-depth feature by feature comparison of the Up a Baby Menu and the Caligo Compact Strollers. So, if you're torn between these two strollers and are a specs nerd like I am, then this video is for you. Otherwise, you can Kaluga f yourself. What'd I say? You just told them to Kaluga f themselves. Welp. Okay, uh, my sincerest apologies. Uh, I don't know how that got in here, uh, but whoever wrote the script, I'm sure will be dealt with swiftly and promptly uh, to the fullest extent of the law. All right, let's start off by looking at the price. The Kalugo Compact runs around 295 bucks, uh, but has a 100 day money back guarantee if you decide you need to Kalugo another direction. So if you don't like it, uh, you can ship it back to them for free. The Up a Baby menu is quite a bit more expensive, coming in at uh, anywhere between $560 and $590. Uh, and this depends on which color you choose. Now the $590 model is called the Jake. What are you wearing, Jake from State Farm? And comes in all black, but uh, that's about the only difference I can see between this model and the other menu models. All right, so let's talk about what each stroller comes with. So I have the Devon model of the Up a Baby menu, uh, and the only thing it comes with is a uh, a cover, basically. The Kluge, on the other hand, comes with a travel bag, a rain cover, and the all important cup holder. And I am a staunch believer that every stroller on the market in this country comes with a free cup holder. And unfortunately, not all of them do. And, and it's a big mystery to me as to why not, because as a parent, you need a cup holder. But the Uppa Baby does offer a travel bag and a cup holder as accessories on their site, uh, but it will cost you an additional $125 and $40 respectively. So doing some quick calculus here, if you want the same accessories that the Kalugo offers for free, the overall price of the Uppa Baby menu skyrockets to around 725 bucks. Now with the Uppa Baby, you can buy a car seat adapters that allow you to securely connect your car seat to the stroller, which is not something you can do with the Kalugo. So there are two different connectors you can buy. Uh, one for their Mesa car seat, which costs about 25 bucks, and another that adapts to the Nuna, uh, Maxi Cozy, and Cybex brands of car seats. Uh, and that one will cost you about 50 bucks. With both the Kaluga and Menu, you can purchase an infant insert, which is basically a mini bassinet that will connect to the stroller, which then allows you to use both strollers uh, with your newborn. So before I go any further, I wanted to mention that if you are interested in purchasing either of these strollers, there are affiliate links in the description below for your convenience. So clicking on those links helps support this channel at absolutely no additional cost to you. So if you like what we do, uh, please consider clicking those links. My bookie will thank you. So the overall size and weight of each stroller is fairly similar. Uh, the Kluge weighs in around 16 pounds and the menu is just shy of 15 pounds. Now the maximum weight the menu seat can carry is 50 pounds, whereas the Kluge has a weight limit of 55 pounds. So very similar to each other uh, regarding the seat capacity. All right, so let's get into the opening and closing of each stroller, which to me is one of the more important features. Both the Kluge and the menu offer a one-headed fold mechanism, which means that all you have to do is squeeze the folding mechanism and push down and the stroller will collapse into a super compact folded position. Now I've found that they both live up to the one-handed fold hypeness, but I actually prefer the Kalugo's folding mechanism uh, more than the menus. And the reason for this is because with the Kalugo, you simply have to just squeeze the folding trigger, but with the menu, you have to kind of like slide the button on the back of the handlebar in and then squeeze the trigger and then push down. However, I will say that when you open the menu, it seems to snap into place more easily than the Kalugo. With the Kalugo, I have to usually give it another shake or two to get the frame to lock into place. All right, let's step into the shade for a bit and take a look at the two canopies. The Upper Baby's canopy is noticeably larger than the Kalugo's, but both of them extend about the same distance over uh, the seat. What this means is that there is more headroom under the menu's canopy, which really comes into play as your child gets larger. Now, you can extend the canopies of both strollers, but you do it in different ways. The menu has like a secondary canopy that can be pulled out but it doesn't do much to extend how much the seat is covered. 
Uh, I think of it more as of a, a curtain that you can pull down as opposed to like an umbrella. With the Klugo, you can unzip the back of the canopy to extend how much of your child is being shaded. Now, both strollers offer what's known as a peekaboo window, so you can constantly spy on your baby unnoticed to make sure they're not texting while riding. However, the peekaboo window of the Klugo is quite a bit smaller than the Minuus. Uh, not sure that's a huge deal, um, but again, just a difference that I wanted to know. All right, let's take a brief jaunt over to the handlebar and see what's doing there. The handlebars are quite a bit different uh, in that the menus feels way more luxurious uh, with its organic uh, all grain leather wrapping uh, and its overall girthness. So I definitely felt like it was gripping onto something rather substantial. Now that's not to say that the Klugo's handlebar is not comfortable or anything like that. It's just, it's just as soft and provides a nice touch to these delicate little mitts, but you can definitely feel the difference between the two. So something that's definitely worth noting is that the menu's handlebar is situated further back from the stroller than the Klugo's handlebar. What this results in is that you end up standing closer to the stroller when pushing the Klugo, which could result in you kicking the stroller or even, um, you know, uh, applying the brake or engaging the brake. With the menu, you're standing further back and your legs have more room to do their thing. Uh, for our taller, longer legged friends out there, um, this is something you should probably consider. Now that said, there is an advantage to the handlebar being closer to the stroller and that it allows the stroller to have a more uh, compact center of gravity, which is especially important if you've got a diaper bag or backpack strapped to the handlebar. So if you do and you walk away from the stroller, the Klugo is going to be less likely to tip over than uh, the menu. Uh, now the seats of the two strollers also have some noticeable differences that I wanted to cover. Uh, first, the depth and the width of the menu is both deeper and wider than the Klugo seat. The depth of the Klugo seat is uh, only about seven and a half inches versus the menu's uh, seat, which is around nine inches deep. Okay, now I really wanted to make a joke here, um, but uh, I'm on the verge of being banned, so well, if I did make this joke, I'm not sure who would be around to finish this review. So I'll just leave it there. But I think we all know where I was going. <laughs> Nine inches. Now the seat backs of both strollers are around 18 inches, but like I mentioned earlier, the canopy of the Klugo is closer to the top of the seat back. So again, as your kid gets bigger, these types of issues start to become much more noticeable. So as an example, Calvin is on the larger end of the spectrum as far as uh, kids' weights and heights go. So at times I struggled to get him situated in the seat of the Klugo. So it didn't seem like he was going to slip out. Um, and his head constantly is grazing the uh, underneath of the canopy, which to me kind of looks funny, uh, but he's not really a fan of it. With the Klugo, the seat cover is 100% removable 100% washable and 100% wipeable. 100, as the kids say. Uh, so this is super helpful because kids are simply put kind of gross um, and like to get things dirty. So this is a pretty nice feature to have. Both seats have multiple reclining options by pulling on the straps situated on the back side of the seat, but on the Klugo, you can fully recline the seat to 180 degrees. Now you can do this because the footrest of the Klugo can uh, be manipulated up and down. Um, so if you're gonna lie the seat back flat, you can lift the footrest flat as well, which gives you that nice, nearly lie flat position. And to put a button on the seats, and to put a butt in on the seats, I think that joke works. Now both seats utilize a five point harness system, but again, some noticeable differences here. The menu operates using a traditional buckling system, whereas the Kalugo comes equipped with a magnetic harness. Now I will say it did take me a hot minute to get accustomed to using the magnetic harness, due to the fact that you kind of have to hold the two strap components together with one hand and then affix the crotch strap to the shoulder straps. Now taking a peep under the seat, both the Kalugo and the menu come with a decently sized basket. Uh, but again, I think there's uh, there are a couple of important distinctions to make here. First, the Kalugo caps its weight limit to 10 pounds, unlike the menu, which has a 20 pound carrying capacity. The basket of the Klugo is much deeper and is fully enclosed on all sides, where the menu's basket is open on either end. So the trade-off here is having an easier time getting things in and out of the basket versus the comfort of knowing that once there are items in the basket, they probably aren't going to be falling out. Now, one of the more important tests I'm running with any stroller that I review, um, I am dubbing the dozen donut test. And simply, it's just to understand whether or not the basket of a stroller can hold a box of a dozen donuts because who wouldn't think that's important? And I'm happy to report uh, that indeed both the uh, Upper Baby and the Kluvo can in fact hold a box of a dozen donuts. So uh, I'm sure that this will make your buying decision all that much harder. And I apologize for that, but uh, I'm a journalist and I just report the facts.
Uh, and I'll also quickly mention the wheels here. Uh, the tires on both the Kaluga and the Menu are composite tires, meaning they don't need to be filled with air, uh, and they're small. So not much more to say outside of that. So who are these strollers for? Well, I've got some bad news. I'd be happy with either one of them. Um, they both function really well. They close and open super easily. They are both super compact and lightweight. Uh, they both have a high-end look and feel to them. So it's hard for me to say simply uh, A or B, B or A, or both A and B, or both B and A, whatever combination. Um, I think it's really important that you understand what features you're going to prioritize. If you simply need a stroller that opens and closes without a fuss, then I'd give the slight edge to Klugo. If you want a high-end stroller that is super solid and sturdy, but maintains a slim lightweight figure, then maybe the menu is for you. If price is your biggest concern, then I would say far and away go with Klugo. Uh, but if you're concerned about some of the trade-offs you get with the Klugo, like the smaller seat, the lower headspace underneath the canopy, uh, the lower quality handlebar wrapping, and price is not an issue, then go with the menu. Again, it's all about what features are most important to you. So I hope this video helps you prioritize those features uh, and helps inform your buying decision. So let us know in the comments which one you went with or would go with. Um, I'm really interested to hear back from folks and read what you all have to say. Um, if you want to read what I have to say, say like from an online course for newer expecting dads, then get your hands on the Sexy Father's Ed workbook. It's chock full of extremely important information that will help guide you through everything you need to know on how to take care of your baby for the first few months of their life. Uh, beyond that, you're on your own. Uh, just kidding, that's why we're here. Uh, we also cover topics ranging from pre-birth activities, what to bring to the hospital, how to be a supportive partner, uh, what kind of gear you should get. I mean, it's coming out of the sides of its diaper with the amount of info Father Zed provides. So go to fathercraft.com slash Father Zed for more info. That's fathercraft.com slash Father Zed. All right, people, I appreciate you. I'll see you in the next video.